Welcome everybody to Forza Motorsport 7 and today we're taking a look at the K1 Speed Car Pack. Now this was originally supposed to release last week on Tuesday but it apparently got delayed for some glitch and uh, yeah it has only just been released a few couple of hours ago so this isn't going to be as long or in depth as previous reviews purely because it's out a lot later than normal but there are five cars that will get a review, fully fledged review of their own and two race cars that we'll, we'll uh, take a quick look at on this uh, ep ep video and the first of those uh, race cars is this 1976 Chevrolet number no. 76 Greenwood Corvette and it's an immense vehicle quite frankly as you can see it doesn't really look much like a Corvette anymore with a big rear spoiler huge huge tires at the rear end and uh, yeah plenty of other modifications uh, the biggest of which is under the hood which is a 7.7 .7 litre V8 engine producing 700 horsepower and 629 pounds feet of torque so that's way more than you know the most powerful Corvette from the 70s and 60s and doesn't weigh all that much either at 2,800 pounds so yeah plenty of power very much in the lack of weight which obviously you'd expect for a racing car like this and uh, yeah as a result it's obviously going to be really really rather quick so yeah as you can see nothing you know extra nothing comfort wise in there whatsoever just the seat steering wheel and all the uh, kind of wiring that you'd ever need so uh, yeah we're going to take this car out onto the track and see what it can do so see you when we get there Right, so we're at Road Atlanta full circuit for one lap, and I've chosen this trap because this is a trap that this car was successful at. It actually won a race at here in uh, the seven years. So uh, yeah, let's see what it can do. So yeah, really rather high revving for a uh, Corvette from the seven years. Certainly no stranger to corners either, which again. There's not something cold for us back then, uh, we're all like, used to them right now. So yeah, handles fairly decently for a car from the time, especially one based on a Corvette. And uh, yeah, with that 700 horsepower and very little in the way of weight, it's certainly a car that has good acceleration. 0 to 16, 3.9 seconds, which would challenge most Corvettes from the past 10 years, for instance. Uh, not, to not to 107 seconds and it wants to do 221 miles an hour which is obviously far faster than any Corvette before so uh, yeah incredibly powerful mainly good at pretty good overall in terms of uh, handling and uh, yeah certainly got speed going for it as well so yeah pretty decent car obviously I'm not sure what race series is this could go against in terms of other cars on this uh, game but just on its own, it's a fairly formidable car and will obviously be even more fun to race with if you can find other cars from the same period that would have gone against it. But yeah, like I've said plenty of times in reviews before, racing cars really aren't you know, something I'm hugely interested in. But I've always said that car packs are a compromise and a couple of racing cars here and there are a compromise overall. And I certainly know that there will be people out there that will enjoy this car. So uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look at the uh, three cars that will get in a review of their own. Then we'll be looking at another racing car and then we'll look at the final two that will get a review of their own. So yeah, see you when we get there. And this is the first of those cars that will get a review of its own, the 1948 Ferrari 166 Intersport. Now yes, it does look like a racing car, but unlike plenty of other racing cars in this game, this was actually road legal at the time. So that's why it will be able to get a review of its own. And uh, yeah, it's joint oldest Ferrari on the game with the uh, 166 MM Barquetta, I think it is. And uh, yeah, even though obviously this was one of the first cars Enzo and Ferrari made, it was actually based on an Alfa Romeo body. But nonetheless, it's a cracking car, as you can see, by handling and braking alone for a car from 1948, which is obviously 70 years ago. That is fairly good at handling and braking. Acceleration is not bad and speed is fairly decent as well for a car that only has 129 horsepower and 117 pounds feet to torque. Obviously it only weighs 1,517 pounds, so it's really not got all that much weight to lug around. So uh, yeah, um, once again glad that we've got another old, uh, old pre-50s uh, open wheel car quite frankly. Uh, there's been plenty of these that have been added to the game by DLC or added to the series from the standard. but. Yeah, I've uh, enjoyed every one of them and uh, this is another one to enjoy. Uh, moving on, we're going to have a look at another uh, car that 
it's a car type that we've not had before in the 2018 Honda Odyssey and obviously this is a people carrier or minivan if you're from America and uh, yeah this has divided the community once again mostly in terms of negative response but me personally I'm all for it because the more wide variety of types of vehicles we can have on this game the better and uh, this is hopefully the start of you know investing in these kind of vehicles because yeah they might not be the most fun cars or the best handling cars out there to drive but upper class uh, you know variants like this certainly have their own uh, you know plus points and uh, yeah 280 horsepower is not bad obviously it weighs a hell of a lot uh, but yeah I've driven this and it handles and goes far better than you'd expect especially for a car that is obviously uh, more used to carrying people around at 40 rather than 140 but nonetheless I am glad it's in the game uh, moving on and I've got another car that's kind of a landmark for the company that it is a part of and that's the 2017 Maserati Levante S obviously this is the first SUV that uh, Maserati has ever made which then kind of jumping on the bandwagon quite frankly because everyone's making an SUV these days even Alfa Romeo so uh, yeah is a bit of a bandwagon jumper and I have heard that there are some negatives in terms of driving this for real but as you can see it's got plenty of power and torque and uh, even though it does weigh a fair bit it does weigh less than other SUVs out there and uh, handling and braking wise it's fairly decent as well but yeah it is something that I really wouldn't have liked Maserati to do there are some car companies out there that I just don't think should be making these and Maserati is one of them but maybe it will surprise me in terms of how good it is right so yeah we're going to be moving on to the final race car that we're going to be uh, taking a proper look at by taking it out onto the track let's just find it so yeah here we are the 1985 Nissan number 83 electromotive engineering GTB ZX turbo bit of a mouthful there but yeah let's take a look at it in Forza Vista mode so yeah looks pretty much like your typical racing car to be honest massive spoiler and uh, yeah clearly not road legal whatsoever unlike the uh, couple of the uh, racing cars that we've already taken a look at in terms of like the, the Ferrari and a couple more that we'll also be looking at later but uh, yeah as you can see fully fledged racing car massive wing and all and a fairly powerful engine as well for 1985 Just zoom in on it there we go so uh, yeah 641 horsepower 506 pounds feet of torque from a 3 litre twin turbocharged V6 and it only weighs 1896 pounds so uh, yeah fairly um, formidable amount of power for something that weighs so little and obviously in terms of handling it's going to be pretty good as well with that giant wing providing all the downforce you could ever need along with all the aerodynamic uh, engineering advantages but yeah, nonetheless, we're going to take this car out onto the uh, circuits and uh, see, well, one of the circuit and s one of the circuits and see what it can do. So yeah, see you when we get there. All right, so at Circuit of the Americas chose this track purely because it's got a great mix of uh, straight line speed and han uh, good handling corners. So we should probably test this Nissan out. Revs to the same kind of uh, RPM limit as the uh, Corvette, to be honest, which is a surprise. You see, they have different engines, and this isn't naturally aspirated like that Corvette was. I'm just like the Corvette, I'm not massively interested in uh, cars like this. Obviously, I am interested in the Corvette in terms of its stock models, but racing versions a little less so. I have to admit that this is a pretty formidably handling car, even with my uh, clumsy self behind the wheel. And uh, yeah, in terms of acceleration, it's pretty good as well. 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds, and 0 to 106.1, and I'm going to a top speed of 205 mile an hour. Pretty uh, interesting that they're kind of similar to the. Uh, Corvette in terms of acceleration times, it's only 0 0.1 of a second quicker to 60, a little just under a second quicker to 100, and this is actually far slower in terms of top speed, so that is kind of interesting considering, you know, there are two cars that are nine years apart, and obviously completely different to one another, this, is insert this certainly isn't based on a normal road car for instance. probably 
considerably uh, a lot more technologically advanced just because it has obviously has a turbocharged engine. Yeah, it's pretty uh, decent to drive, really, as you'd expect for a car with this racing pedigree. Sticks like glue to the track. Obviously, the faster you go, the more downforce you actually have. But yeah, obviously uh, it's not something I'm really interested in, but it's a solid all-rounder and I'm pretty sure there'll be, again, like the Corvette, plenty of people that will be interested in in such a vehicle. And uh, yeah, it's certainly a uh, fun enough car to drive around. So yeah, we're going to now take a look at the final two cars in the car pack that will, once again, like the Ferrari, Honda and Maserati, get a rear over their own. So uh, yeah, see you when we get there. And this is the first of those cars, the 1980 Porsche 924 Carrera GTS. Now this was the ultimate version of the 924, as it was stripped out, more powerful, and obviously a far more race-orientated vehicle. And uh, yeah, that shows with the uh, amount of power that it has, 245 horsepower, 247 pounds-feet of torque is not bad whatsoever, especially since it is from 1980 and only has a 2.0-litre inline-four turbocharged engine. And it weighs a mere 2,469 pounds, thanks to the fact that it was stripped out. For instance, it has no rear seats. And, uh, yeah, stats are pretty solid as well. Obviously, the braking is not all that great, but handling is f pretty solid, and acceleration speed is fairly decent as well. And it looks uh, pretty mean as well, and even, even though it doesn't look as nice in terms of looks than the uh, standard 924. But we've never had a 924 on a Forza game before, so it is nice to have on. And then you can obviously compare it somewhat to the 944. Uh, the later version that we have on this game. And uh, yeah, finally, the, we've got the uh, 1966 Porsche 906 Carrera 6. This was actually Porsche's last ever road legal racing vehicle that they made, which again is why it will get a review of its own, because it's not a fully fledged racing car, because obviously you can use it on the road. And uh, yeah, it's pretty formidable as you can see. Acceleration is absolutely stellar. Speed is decent, handling braking is excellent as well for 1966. And uh, yeah, all for 210 horsepower, 144 pounds feet to torque, but it only weighs 1360 pounds. Weirdly though, it does kind of look like a Ferrari from the back. So uh, yeah, maybe they've taken a little bit of inspiration from uh, Ferrari at the time, but I'm sure this car is pretty good on its own merits. So yeah, that's everything in the car pack. So it's not as long or as in detail as usual, but I've uh, given my reasons why. But yeah, you will get five car reviews nonetheless, and uh, yeah, obviously I'll do whatever, you know, extreme power or half a split to go with any car that is appropriate as well. Nonetheless, uh, yeah, pretty solid car pack. Uh, I like the uh, Ferrari, and I really like the uh, Porsche 924. The Honda is interesting. I'm not sure about the Maserati. The two racing cars probably have their audience, and I do quite like this Carrera, but not the most solid car pack. Certainly not. Uh, probably a little bit underwhelming in some respects but I'm certainly not hating on it and uh, yeah it's uh, certainly got its pluses as well and uh, at the end of the day we've got seven new vehicles that we've never had on a game before from Forza and uh, yeah that obviously adds variety to an already stellar car list so yeah I'm all for it even if it's not wholly to my personal taste anyway thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye